Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina. If you're back, welcome back. And today we are talking about ColourPop's new launches, including their no filter foundation, their no filter setting powder, and their no filter sheer pressed powder. Now, I was going to do a video where I applied everything on camera um, and showed you how it worked. I'm seeing so many reviews out there that I'm sure you've seen a lot of people apply this. I'm going to insert some clips here uh, of when I did a get ready with me on Instagram the other day where I was showing you guys how this applied and why I, spoiler alert, don't like the foundation. Um, I show you a close up of me outside so you can see why I don't like it. Even though it's vertical footage and it's not like the nicest, you know, footage I could give you, it's probably the most accurate and I just don't have the patience right now to try this for like a fifth time and take you along my day. I just don't have the time right now. Even though the clips are short, I think you can get a good idea of what it was doing and that was probably my third time wearing it. I kept trying it all weekend in different settings, going outside, and I just am not a fan. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the clips right now and I will be back to talk about the rest. Hey guys, I thought we would do a get ready with me using some new products I'm getting ready to film in a little bit and I thought you guys would wanna see some stuff in action. We're gonna try the ColourPop foundation again with different primer. And now I'm gonna take the ColourPop foundation and a beauty blender sponge of some kind. I'm gonna do three pumps. Um, I do not like this foundation with a brush at all. I'm still unsure that this is my shade. And here's my thoughts so far on this foundation, okay? It's not bad, it's fine, but it's not great and it clings to any fuzz or texture you have and it makes your pores look bad. The coverage is actually a little patchy, so you have to put on more than you want to put on to actually get the coverage you want because it's not, it's about a medium, I wouldn't say it's full but then it looks heavy if you go overboard. I don't know if you guys can see, but it really accentuates pores right here, dryness right here, and I've exfoliated. Um, it's okay. It's just, it's not my favorite. And I. So in the sun, look at me. Look at my forehead. Look at how bad it looks. Look at how bad my pores look. It's not a flattering foundation at all, especially compared to the Tom Ford one I tried a few days ago. Like, this looks like garbage. Now, it doesn't look bad from here. It doesn't look bad. And I'm not trying to tell you that influencers are liars, but I don't know anyone in real life that is actually enjoying this foundation. So, just telling you that. I hope it was helpful for you to see it in action in a more like casual setting without you know the studio lights because I do think that when I have my umbrella lights and when I have you know natural light in front of me it can make me look like I have really good skin when in real life you know I have flaws just like everyone else it's just light good lighting is good lighting is crucial and I don't even have super good lighting but a lot of the influencers that you watch on your TV they don't have skin that looks that perfected. They have smoothing filters, smoothing cameras, a shit ton of lighting that makes it look like they are perfection. And I think this foundation is getting really good reviews. And I'm not sure that they're all being honest with you. Um, especially because I follow a few influencers that have dry skin or combination skin like I do. And they loved it and I'm not sure how. I'm very dry right here. I'm very oily on my nose throughout the end of the day. Those are my two problem areas. So sometimes with foundations I will have issues with clinging right here and breaking up or breaking up right here from the oils throughout my day. Um, I do tend to try a foundation with no primer, with a hydrating primer, and a pore filling primer. For me this works best with no primer at all but it wasn't great. But that's when I got the best application was when I was not wearing any primer. I don't know if it's my skin type or what, but it just didn't really play very well with most primers, especially not pore filling primers. It tended to 
ball up or look cakey in those areas and cling. It clings to any kind of peach fuzz that you have and it will accentuate your dry patches. If you use an oil underneath, sort of, you can get it to work a little bit better. Or if you use something illuminating like the Hollywood Flawless Filter, you can get mixed results. I had one day where it looked okay and I had another day where it looked terrible. It's just not a very consistent foundation for me and I just did not find it flattering whatsoever. Um, my biggest gripe with it is that, okay, it is $12 and I understand that for $12 you're like, you know, I'm gonna make it work and it's cheap. I mean, you can go to the drugstore and get really good foundation for 12 bucks. You know, Milani makes an amazing foundation. The L'Oreal Pro Glow is an amazing foundation. Um, if you're wanting to stay cruelty free, I do understand that the ColourPop is a good price range, but I just, I'm not sure that it's gonna work for everyone. Um, let's talk about the coverage though. The coverage is a medium to full. I say that because you can get it to full coverage, um, but for me, getting it even is such a struggle that you end up over applying and it ends up looking cakey and crusty. There's no doubt about that. Even when I've been hydrated to the next level, it just, it doesn't look good. I'm, I, I, it doesn't look good. I've even tried it on the perimeter and then something else in the center because it pools or accentuates my large pores even worse. Um, another thing to know about the foundation is wear time. Um, I did get pretty good wear time. I think you can wear it for a solid 12 hours and it will still be on your face. And it does kind of warm up throughout the day so it doesn't look as cakey as the day goes on. But for me, I don't need, I mean, I'm a stay at home mom. I don't need a foundation to last me 12 hours. You know, I, I usually will go run my errands, do what I need to go do, have lunch, whatever I'm doing during the day, even date night, whatever. I come home and I wash my face. I, I'm not sitting in it for 12 hours, but for someone that's looking for something long wearing for work, I do think it holds up well, but it just looks not great on application. You feel like a Monet when you wear this, where it's like, from far away, you look pretty good, but from up close, you're a big old mess. Tell me what movie that's from, and we're best friends. <laughs> as far as the color match, uh, you saw in the clip as well, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it. it the, the formulation is super runny, as you can see there, and it's a little thinner than I was expecting it to be. Um, it's very yellow, but then when you start blending, it's almost like peach a peachy tone to the yellowness it doesn't quite ever look quite right on me um i can't speak to the other shades because i'm not any other shade and i do think it's a good match for me i don't think i would change to go darker or lighter it's just the undertone is a little off and i know for sure i'm not a cool undertone so this is all i have left you know, I'm not saying that influencers are lying. I think everyone has different experiences. Everyone has something that they like or don't like, and we all have different preferences. Um, I will admit, I, I'm not a full coverage kind of girl. I just don't like it. I don't think it looks good. I very rarely have seen it look good in person, and I, I wanna look like myself in person. So for me, it's a no, but that doesn't mean anything for you because you might have different preferences than I do. Now, if you have oily skin, I think you might enjoy this. Uh, it didn't get overly oily throughout the day. My nose wasn't greasy towards the end of the day, and there are parts of my skin where it looked really nice. So I think if you have, you know, pretty even skin and you're oily to normal, you might be able to use this. Um, just keep in mind that you might have to play with different applications and possible different primers. It's not the worst foundation I've ever tried, but it's just not good. And $12 might be a lot for some of you. And so I'm gonna say no to this. It says no filter, so I thought it would have like a blurring effect, but it just really doesn't. And then when topped with the pressed powder, I looked like the Crypt Keeper. Um, I actually have enjoyed the sheer pressed powder to set my makeup. As some of you know, I like a more luminous look to my skin, so I don't set my entire face, and I certainly do not set where I have fine lines and wrinkles or dry spots. I just don't. Um, but I do use this to kind of set right here so I can blend my... Um, 
So I can blend my contour or my bronzer. I always like to put a little bit of powder underneath just so you know it doesn't look splotchy. And I have liked it for that. Um, as far as using this powder for your under eyes, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, it is a soft and almost invisible powder. You can see it right there. It does have some shades and I do have to commend them for the shade range, you can't see. Um, and it does look quite invisible on the skin and it can a little bit blur your pores just a little, um, but on dry spots, this is no good for me anyways. Um, it just makes it look more dry. So um, I do recommend the sheer pressed powder if you're using it how I'm using it, maybe for like a touch more coverage on something more sheer or just to set your foundation. Um, I recommend it, but if you have dry spots, you know, be cautious of that. Um, my surprise favorite from all of these was the ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder. Um, it is kind of a small container, it looks like, but actually it does contain quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of product. It's 8.5 grams. It's not bad. It's not the greatest powder I've ever used in my whole life. But it's very nice. Um, I don't find that it cakes up under my eyes. I don't think that it adds age to me. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I do have the beginnings of fine lines and wrinkles. I know a lot of you have mature skin as well. And as you know, baking powders or loose setting powders can make you look about 10 to 15 years older. They just do. Um, I do find a very thin layer of this with either a beauty sponge or a setting brush works really well. It does not cake up or look gross it by any means. But on top of this, it just doesn't look good. I, I don't I don't know if I just had a weird experience in general, but I just didn't find that they played all that well. I do like this even right here where my larger pores are. It gives gives a little bit of a smoothing effect. Um, I think it's pretty good. It's not the best powder I've ever used, but I really like it and I think it's affordable. Next time you place a ColourPop order, I would recommend picking this up and checking it out because it is inexpensive and it's good and it doesn't give you flashback, which is very nice. I do wanna give you some pluses and minus before I say goodbye to you. Um, you know, the price point is on point. The shade range is good. It's huge and diverse and I think everyone can find something and for the price you can probably order a couple and you know figure out your best match. Um, like I said I do think that there is a group of people that might really enjoy this if you don't mind your makeup looking like makeup. I hope this video was helpful or entertaining in some way for you. I hope that you got the information you were looking for. I'm sorry I didn't do a more check-ins and a longer wear time but honestly I gave it so many tries that I just I didn't want to do it again. I just really didn't. Uh, you can see in my clips how much I wanted to wash my face off uh, on that day and it's been like that pretty much every day. Again, I, I do think the powders are nice. There's nothing spectacular or bad about them. I think they're pretty solid powders and I think that you'll probably enjoy them. Um, the foundation, it's up to you if you think it's worth trying it for $12. I think it's worth trying. If you have combo skin, dry skin, um, large pores, and texture, I, I wouldn't recommend it. And I would save my money, go to the drugstore, and maybe try Milani. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you want to see from me next. I know I've gotten a few requests on an eyebrow tutorial. And um, because I have very natural, full eyebrows, and I guess a lot of you do too. So um, I'd be happy to do that for you if that's something that is interesting to you. I also have, um, I could do a BoxyCharm review this month. Um, I've started receiving that instead of the Allure Beauty Box. And I also could just do a good old fashioned Beautylish slash Sephora slash Ulta haul because I have collected a few things here and there and I have reviews on almost everything. So let me know if any of those things sound interesting for Thursday's video and I will get on that for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.